We, uh, you're gonna, this is Tools Lead for Qualcomm and the Advanced Content and Gaming Group. Uh, Pete here is actually the lead for the, the tool I'm going to show, which is Adreno Profiler. Uh, so, as you mentioned, Adreno Profiler is a PC-based application uh, intended for graphics, performance, and optimization, um, as well as some uh, debugging features as well. Um, so it actually connects to uh, the device, so we have instrumented drivers, all of our commercial drivers ship with profiler instrumentation in them so that, you know, whatever phone uh, your app's running on, you can connect to it and profile it there, uh, which is an advantage over just being able to profile on, uh, you know, a dev kit because, you know, as you know, like, there's different configurations in commercial phones that can cause performance glitches that you might not see on a reference design, so. Uh, <coughs> so Dave, sorry, so this works with any Adreno device? So this works with, yeah, any relatively recent Adreno device. So anything with an Adreno 200 or higher GPU with a few exceptions should work. Um, some of the Adreno 130, the previous generation, should work um, in OpenGL ES 1.0 mode. But yeah, uh, and that's for, for Android and OpenGL based devices. So even though we're on Windows Phone, currently that API is not exposed, so that's not available there, but for everything else. So, right. So uh, the question is how uh, Profiler actually connects, uh, collects information from the device. So uh, one of the nice things about this and one of the things we designed this around is that we didn't want to have to require modifications to applications. With a lot of the work that we were doing internally, we would receive applications for third parties that we wouldn't necessarily have source code to. Um, so we want to be able to profile them without doing that. Um, and as I said, like we didn't want to have to, you know, be able, uh, have to load like some kind of special instrument and build or anything like that. So what we've done is our, in our standard default OpenGLES driver, we have an instrumentation layer in there. So the profiler is connected um, and you have it enabled on your application then, uh, which in Android is just a matter of setting internet p permissions so it can communicate with, uh, with the PC. Um, then uh, once the profiler is connected, it will collect additional information that can communicate back and forth over USB uh, to the PC tool. So. Yeah, so it's actually not even embedded in the app. So the app doesn't have to know anything about Profiler at all. It's all in our OpenGLES driver. So when your application creates an OpenGLES context, um, it actually opens up a socket and, and looks for the Profiler connection and starts sending information back and forth with that. Uh, so if you've got, uh, we've got Profiler installed on all these machines in here. Um, we've, uh, we have the save and load ability in Profiler. So we've, we've created a session earlier, save the information associated with that and load it up so you can follow through with some of this. Um, but as you saw, when I connect, it will use ADB, in the case of Android, uh, to look for uh, applications that are currently running that have this connection open. And then you can pick the one you want to connect to. So in this case, I'm connecting to Bunny Maze, which is a game you know, you've probably seen us showing around a bit. Um, so I'm connected to that. And then once I'm there, the first thing I probably want to do is create a scrubber. So this, what the scrubber does is allow you to do detailed single frame analysis. So it will go through the complete call trace. I'll give you information about that. So I'll create that window. It's scrubber2.x because it's an OpenGL ES2 application. By the way, can everybody hear me okay? I don't know if, I know there's a lot of background noise. So, okay, we're good? Great. Um, <clears throat> so I'm connected there. Let me get to an interesting scene in the app. So I'll go ahead and capture a frame. Um, so now what this is doing is uh, it looks for certain frame delimiters, so usually that's like swapping from the front to the back buffer, and it will capture all of the OpenGL ES API calls between those, those boundaries. Um, and you can actually configure, um, oh, there we go. Um, you can configure what it considers frame boundaries. There's some cases where you might not be doing, like doing partial frame updates and things like that. So we have this tab where you can um, specify what the frame delimiters are, uh, depending on your content. For games, it's typically gonna be a swap buffer, but for UIs, it might be something else, so you can set that up in here. Um, but so it captures all those calls, and you can look at that here in the call trace. So as you can see, this is all of the draw calls, and you can step through these individually. As you select them, uh, it'll highlight what geometry in the scene is showing up in that call. Let me make this uh, fit in the window. Yeah, so as you step through these, you can see the scene come into view and see what's going on there. Um, in association with that, we also list all of the additional OpenGL ES API calls. So these are all the non-draw calls that occur between the previous call and the current one. 
Uh, so you can see that with all the parameters associated with them. Um, one thing we do with the full call trace is we look through there and look for things that are potentially problematic and we call those out in the comments thing. So uh, in this, like we've identified that there's some calls that backspace calling isn't being used and that's something that often can lead to performance gain. So we, we help you start off with a few uh, useful areas to look at to start doing optimization. Um, but yeah, as I said, you can look at all the API calls. You can see the OpenGLES context at that, st at that point for, uh, for all the various states and, and what those are currently set to. Um, we see these columns for no effect and heavy. So as, you, as I showed over here with these different calls, so uh, no effect calls are basically like redundant state changes and that kind of thing where you made this call but it didn't actually do anything so you could potentially eliminate those from your application. Uh, heavyweight calls are things like loading textures, loading vertex buffer objects and things like that that you typically want to avoid, um, you know, especially on an interframe basis. Uh, so we just call those out to make sure that you're aware that those calls are there. Um, Go back to this. In addition to all the calls, all the API calls, we also capture all the textures and allow you to view those here. So you can step through all the textures, um, see how big they are, see what format they're in. So these are all RGBA textures. Um, so one of the things that the, the our analysis will reveal in this case is that you're not using compressed textures at all, so we'll recommend that you use them. So you can see from this which textures, uh, like I said, the, the sizes and the formats. Uh, to get a better picture of that. Um, it actually allows you to uh, interactively re replace a texture. So if you wanted to like load in some other image to better visualize something, you can do that. If you're using MIP maps, we allow you to override the MIP levels with solid colors so you can see how effectively you're using MIP maps and, and potentially use a, a lower um, resolution for the base level. Uh, so currently we're see looking at the color buffer, but you can also see um, the other buffers, so if I switch this, I can see the depth buffer. Uh, I don't think this scene uses stealth, stencil, or alpha, uh, but if it did, you could view those here as well. If you're using frame buffer objects, you can toggle between the display of the current frame buffer object and the back buffer. Um, our Adreno GPU uses a binning architecture, um, where uh, it basically uses individual parts of the screen as tiles and does those one at a time. So you can use this to visualize where those tiles might fall on the screen. Uh, you can view the scene in different modes. So this is like the standard fill mode. You can also view it in wireframe. Um, you can also do this overdraw visualization. So this will tell you how effectively you're using the depth buffer. So if um, you know, you're continually writing into the same pixels, you're potentially wasting fill rate that you could be using on more useful things. So this will kind of give you an idea of how effectively you're doing that. And there's different ways you can visualize this. We'll go back to the default mode. Uh, the other thing I want to call it here, we'll get into some of the metrics uh, in a minute, but so our, our GPU is instrumented with, um, I think, something on the order of several hundred different hardware counters, uh, which are useful on various levels, but we take the most useful ones to developers and present them in a way that's uh, understandable. So some of these can be done on a per frame basis, so if I want to see, for instance, um, how many clocks are used for a given set of draw calls, I can pick that metric, drag it over onto the scene, I have to get back into an actual scene, so rather than the menu. So then I recapture the frame. So now it's going to go ahead and capture all those calls again. Uh, this time it's going to capture all of uh, the, the counters for that I selected, so for the number of clocks per draw call. And once that gets back. So now it's added this uh, additional column to the draw calls here. So it represents like how expensive that particular call was in terms of clocks. Um, but besides being able to see it just kind of in a, a graph mode there, I can actually select that column and then it'll color code the scene um, based on that particular metric. So from here I can see that like the, the red portions of it are the most expensive. They use those most GPU clocks to, to process those particular parts of the scene where the green ones are cheaper. So you can quickly see where your CPU cycles are going, or GPU cycles rather. Um, so then, uh, and just, so this is being able to an analyze in depth a specific scene, a specific frame within a scene. Um, in addition to that, you can connect to all of those counters that I mentioned in the hardware uh, in real time and view those on a grapher. So, I'll come up here in a second. 
So now I can look at the grapher metrics. So there's basic ones you'd expect, like frames per second. Um, so if I set that, now I'm monitoring like how fast the application is running. Um, I can look at the percentage of time that the GPU is busy. I can look at things like uh, GPU stalls. So this will be the general purpose registers for both the vertex and, and pixel stage. And uh, so as I drag these on here, now this is monitoring this in real time as the app runs. Um, I have a few others here. So the number of ALUs per fragment. So I've reached the point now, there's a limited number of registers available to store these counters. So you reach a point where you can't add any more, uh, but you can generally view a large number at once. Um, with all of these, it may not be always immediately obvious what it means, um, or more importantly, like if you see a particular value, whether that's good or bad, and if it's bad, what to do about it. So with all of these, we provide tool tips that basically describe what it means. Um, and if we have recommendations for the, the uh, range of values that you would expect to see in an optimized application, we'll put those there. And whenever possible, we'll make recommendations for what you can do to get that metric to within line with what you want. Um, so this particular mode is most useful in, conjunctions with the, uh, in conjunction with the overrides. So what the overrides do is they allow you to, in real time, change pieces, change states within the OpenGL pipeline. Uh, so this allows you to turn various pieces of it off and see what kind of an impact it has on performance. So again, as with the metrics, we provide you know, tool tips on each of these so they can give you an idea of what that means. So disable GL, what this does is basically make all of the pipeline open GL calls immediately return. So this effectively acts as if you had an infinitely fast GPU. So if you uh, enable this mode, so now I have an infinitely fast GPU and my frame rate didn't change at all. So what that means is the application is probably frame rate or CPU bound and not GPU bound. Um, but by doing this with uh, various states, we can uh, thereby identify bottlenecks. So some of the other things I can do is, um, So I can force a uh, scissor test. So this basically makes the, the display a one by one window. So if I'm fill rate bound and I set a toggle this, I should see a, a, a difference in my frame rate. I can also force small textures. So if my, I'm texture uh, memory bandwidth bound, uh, this will force four, four by four textures and I should see some kind of difference in my frame rate if that's the problem. But basically by iteratively going through these different toggles uh, and seeing what kind of an impact they have on performance, I can figure out where my bottlenecks are and then uh, go optimize my application to address that particular bottleneck, come back, see where the, bo the bottleneck has moved to and keep doing that until I get to the frame rate that I want to see. Uh, correct. So this is, this is basically a GPU profiling. So there are... Right. Right. Yep. So and we are looking at in the future adding additional monitoring for, for just the CPU in general and for different systems like you know, potentially memory and bandwidth, but currently we're just looking at the GPU. Can you only one frame at a time or can you profile the application so as far as, um, like, so currently I'm, I'm monitoring the application as it runs in the, in the grapher, so I can see the metrics for that, and as I, you know, toggle the overrides, that applies as it's running in real time. If I want to do detailed analysis of a frame, I can, we can currently only do that for a single frame. We are working, however, on adding, being able to capture an arbitrary range of frames, and then play them back and, and do analysis of them. So the, the function call level detail is not available for a long run? Is yeah, currently... Right, that's that's correct, uh, and partially that's because with our current architecture, it would be there would be so much overhead involved with capturing all of that data that it would have an impact on how the application actually performs. So only you'd be able to capture a call trace like what, especially in a game where there's like you know this interactive nature to it, it wouldn't really necessarily accurately reflect what people would actually see. <clears throat> um, so the last thing I want to show with this, so I, I already showed how it captures um, all the calls and the textures. Uh, in addition, since this is an OpenGL2 application, I can capture uh, my shaders as well. So this shows all of the shaders that are used in the current scene. Oh, let me switch back to this mode. Um, so this is all the program objects that are currently loaded. The ones that are, are red are loaded, but they're not being used in the current frame. That's where the black ones are. So if I select the black ones, uh, it'll highlight which objects in the scene those shaders are being used on. And then I can view information associated with the shader. So this, and it's kind of small on this limited display size, but uh, so it shows, uh, we do analysis on that to show basically how many GPRs, how many ALU and texture instructions and things like that the shader's using. And we also allow you to view the shader. 
So you can see that in this panel here. Um, sorry. Let me make this bigger. And I'll switch to the fragment shader. So I can view the source code to the shader here. And then I, uh, in addition to just being able to view it, I can actually modify this and send it back to the device in real time. So I want to change, I don't know what the shader does exactly, but change that. So now I've modified the color that's being written out and then I can send it. And so this will actually send it back to the device. So this will allow me to do um, shader debugging and optimization in real time. Typically, like if you modify your shader, then you have to like recompile your app, redeploy it, and then test it from there. And it's a very time consuming and cumbersome process. With this, we allow you to instantly do that. So you can quickly make changes and see what kind of an impact they have on performance and on your rendering quality and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and then in addition to that, we have this uh, separate standalone shader analyzer. So the mode I just showed you, you can only get shaders from the application that's currently running. Uh, so in this mode, I, I can actually load, uh, whether I'm connected to an app or not, I can load shaders up. Um, I think I copied my shaders to my memory stick and didn't bring it with me. So <laughs> let me just grab these. So I'll put the fragment shader in there. Um, so this allows me to have a more um, easy to use interface for editing shaders and then I can see as I edit them, so I'll make some changes down here. So it's a meaningless change, but now it's it's updated the, the analysis of this and shows me like uh, the the cost of the new one versus the old one. So as I go through and I optimize and like potentially reduce the number of instructions, I can see if the changes I'm making are actually having the desired effect and reducing the cost of the share. What's that? Yeah, so it actually is doing it instantly. Like as soon as you make a change, it'll recompile it, and then it'll determine if the shader is valid, and then do the analysis of that. Um, and then you can, add, if you want to, you can just edit them here, make the changes, optimize them, and then paste them back in the other window and send them back to the device and do it that way. So this is a relatively new feature that we just added to this. Um, it makes it really useful to be able to optimize your shaders like this right within the tool. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the extent of it. Do you, anybody have questions about how you would use this or any of the features that I've shown? Okay, so Profiler is freely available. It's on our developer website at developer.qualcom.com or QDevNet. Um, we keep it updated. We do re releases every month or so, um, depending. Uh, we're constantly adding new things to it, so you know if it's, if it's something that uh, you're using and there's th additional things you'd like to see, please contact us and let us know what those are. Um, but we're putting a lot of resources into making sure this this tool gives you all the insight you need into the GPU to make sure that you're taking the best advantage of that, getting all the performance and, uh, and visual quality out of it that you want for your games. And it should work with any any device that has a uh, newer GPU from Qualcomm. Yeah. So any. Um, with a few exceptions, like there's some HTC devices based on the Nexus One hierarchy uh, that don't, but other than that, anything Adreno 200, anything that's shipped within the last couple of years will support Adreno profiling. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Um,